we come to our Bible reading for today. And it comes from uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, and beginning at verse 28. Did I say 26? Oh, I got it right. Good. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This week, there's a group in the house um, who are on a prayer and painting course. And the theme of their whole week is about this verse, in effect, and about resting with God. So during the course of this week, I'm going to be looking at this couple of verses in sort of five different ways. Um, but. I know you're sitting there thinking, ah, oh, I can have a gentle doze now because it's over to him. Tough. This is largely a series of questions to each one of us. Questions that challenge us, I hope, because they certainly should do. And we're going to be looking at the whole idea of our own weariness and our own burdens at the moment. So here's the first question. I told you it would start. What are you wanting to leave behind this week? For those of you that have come away for the whole week, there's possibly something underlying that drove you by the grace of God to Crowhurst. But for each one of us, I suspect, there's something that is just bugging us that we want to leave behind. Maybe it's something that's been around for years, really bugging us, and it's still there. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Let's take a moment. What is it? What's bugging you? as you arrive here this Tuesday morning. Esther, could we have the same verses but in the message translation? It's one of those times when the message just gives a particular flavor that I think is really helpful. So these same verses, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Burned out on religion. I remember when I was the rector of four little villages in Worcestershire. I'm not going to name them, <laughs> but it was a tough old joint, it really was. Um, and I remember getting to the summer holiday and feeling I'd had it with God. It was just so, so hard. And I think that's reflected quite well in here about being burnt out on religion. Now. As it happens, we went to look round this very famous little church down in Cornwall, and the 
the grounds, St. Justin Roseland, if you've ever been there. The grounds are stunning, almost tropical. And Hilary said to me, do you want to go in the church? <laughs> and everything within me went, no! <laughs> but I went in, and it had been wonderfully set up, not just for tourists, but to attract you into the presence of God. We can all at times get burnt out on religion, and sometimes it's, it's those unnecessary burdens that burn us out or constrict us and hold us. I remember um, a friend of mine moved up to um, Cumbria and he was part of the Methodist church and he wanted to be a lay reader. He had to be teetotal before anybody would listen to him. That's not actually in the Bible. Um, and each of our churches, each of our denominations, has an unset, uh, uh, an unspecified set of rules that aren't actually in the Bible. They're bits that were really helpful 50 years ago, but they've become part of the rules of this church, even if they're not written down anywhere. So easy to get bound up with these extra written or unwritten commandments. And Jesus is constantly trying to free people up from all the extra weights that the really religious people of the day were placing upon the ordinary likes of us. Watch out for those unwritten commandments. Take a moment now. What unwritten rules that aren't Jesus-based, actually hold and bind your church congregation. Okay, moving on. And this is really the significant heart, the burden of sin. It's a problem for all of us. And you know, once we've ticked the box, oh, I haven't killed anybody this week, it's so easy to say, it's okay. We don't have a problem with sin. But we do. Now, throughout this talk, I'm going to use examples from my life. Not to say, hi, aren't I wonderful, but rather to say, actually, this is real life stuff. It applies to all of us. So, this is, just after this Easter, went to a favourite place of ours. We went on holiday to Lee Abbey down in Devon. And during the course of that time, God just highlighted for me a particular sin. No, I'm not going to share it with you. Okay, but nonetheless, he pointed very clearly to it. Now, what's sin? Well, the bottom line with sin is putting something else before God. It can be so many different things. Putting something else before God. And he highlighted for me that I was doing this in one particular aspect of my life. The glorious good news is we've got a forgiving saviour and redeemer. So if this is the particular burden for today, then there is a way out at the very heart of our faith, and that's the cross of Jesus. Let's take a moment again. Is the a sin that God's highlighting for you right now. Some place where instead of starting with God, you're starting with something else. It could be a busted relationship or maybe an idol that we hold fast to or an addiction that we just don't seem to be able to get rid of.
What sin burden would God highlight for you today? And then we come to, are you weary? Weariness can be the result of a number of things. But one of the things is that we take on extra tasks. And we need to discern before God the difference between a good thing of which there is a myriad and a God thing. What's God calling us to? Here's another example. I preach once a month in my local parish church. But the administrator from the next group of churches said, "Ah, Steve, any chance that you could cover some of our services as well? And I sort of went, yeah, okay. And I took a service last week, and it went really well. I loved the people there, but I'm almost sure God has said to me, No, actually, it's not what you're meant to be doing at the moment. I've got a whole number of things I do, like come here, and it's a question of which are the God things amongst all the good things you could be doing. So, here's your next question. What should we say no to Or what should we stop doing that we're doing at the moment that was God's thing 10 years ago, but not today? Take a moment. It's amazing. Sometimes when we take a moment like that, the Holy Spirit can snap something into our mind that we'd never thought about before. But maybe in the next two days, God will just bring to the surface what he really wants you to address from one of these questions, or all of the questions. What is it that you've been doing, or what is it you've been asked to do that you should be saying no to this day? But there's another sort of weariness, not to do with extra tasks, but rather we trying to take over God's work. An initiative we've had within our church is to start a men's shed. Uh, This is where boys come together and play with rather sharp toys and talk to each other and have a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, I'm very involved in getting this started in our village and realized after a few weeks that it was the thing I was worrying most about during the course of a week. You know, would we have good conversations together? Would we have enough things to do together? Would we, would we, would we? And then I was walking, as I do, and I happened to put my hand in my pocket, and in it I found a little jigsaw piece that had been given me at a service about a year ago. And God said quite clearly, Steve, it's my job. You're just one piece of the jigsaw. So the next thing for us to consider is when we're feeling weary and burdened, have we made a takeover bid for what is God's work? What could be called the saviour syndrome or trying to be the Christian equivalent of Superman or Superwoman? How do we fit into God's plan rather than take over his plan and want to do it. And in amongst all those questions that are real for us, we have this glorious truth. As we come to Jesus, he says, 
I will give you rest. But it's slightly conditional on the basis that we actually put down all the things that we shouldn't be holding on to, whether that's sin or extra jobs or whatever. So the overriding question for this morning is what changes are needed so that we can receive his rest?